because of this mechanism. And then the third mechanism is, again, is imprinting, like in the Crespi um, uh, hypothesis, imprinting on the X chromosome. And there are some genes on the X chromosome that are imprinted, but of course, men only inherit the X chromosome from the mother. They don't have a paternal X because, um, so any paternally um, expressed gene on the, on the X chromosome is only going to affect the mother, whether it's suppressed or whether it's inactivated. And th this is the way in which uh, suppression occurs through, through methylation. There are other methods as well of, um, of imprinting. And this is a, uh, an article, if you're interested in this area, that you might want to uh, take a look at. However, none of these mechanisms, these are genetic mechanisms for male-female differences. None of them have been shown to, uh, to exist, uh, to, to, uh, to be there in schizophrenia. But they, you know, they might be, but they haven't been shown to be. Now, another way of combining hormones and genetics together to look for differences is to look at genes, for instance, on the estrogen pathway genes on the metabolic pathway of estrogen uh, metabolism. Progesterone might be a, another way to look. And, and people have, are doing this. They're doing it more and more and finding some interesting things. Exactly not, again, not specific to schizophrenia, but you know, that, that is a field, certainly a field for the future. And the other way is copy number variations, which is the big buzzword these days in, uh, in genetics. And that is that certain GNA fragments can vary in, in how many copies there are, either fewer copies or, or more copies. And that these CNV variations are much more common in retardation, autistic spectrum disorders, and schizophrenia. Neurodevelopment dis uh, developmental disorders that affect more males than females or affect m uh, males more severely. So that's interesting. I mean, we, you know, again, there's nothing specific yet about schizophrenia, although more of these uh, variations have been found in, uh, in schizophrenia. The other thing now, of course, it, it, to, to, and it's important, is how culture affects gender differences. This study is from, um, from India. Uh, to, to look at some of the differences between men and women that have been found in the U.S. and to ask whether they're also found in India. And as you might expect, course of illness varies. Course of illness is better in women in the U.S., but you know, in India, in uh, many parts of India and many countries around the world, women do not have access to health care. So obviously the course of illness is, is going to be not as good in, in women in those uh, parts of the world as it is in, in, the Western, in the Western world. Marriage is another, is another area of difference. More, uh, more women marry than men in Western cultures. That's not necessarily a tr uh, true, in, um, and, and that's been attributed to the fact that men with schizophrenia find it hard to, uh, to conduct a courtship because of the apathy and negative symptoms that they have. Courtship is actually a very skilled and difficult procedure. But in, um, in parts of the world where marriages are arranged, that, that need for uh, the ability to court is, of course, less. And so they're not going to see that difference in marriage that, uh, that we see. And so there are differences. Um, how do these differences affect clinical variables? How do they affect? our ability to make a diagnosis. The, this study from uh, Norway uh, sent around a, a case scenario where they showed the same, same case, exactly the same case, except the, the, man, the uh, patient was a man in one case and the patient was a woman in another case. And where the patient was a man, the diagnosis was much, much more common than when it was a woman. In other words, people seem to identify, at least in Norway, but I think probably elsewhere too, identify schizophrenia with males. The, the, uh, the consequence of that is that women get diagnosed later. They get diagnosed later than, than men do. And that is perhaps one of the reasons for the onset age, uh, 
discrepancy. Now, what does it do to women to be diagnosed later? We know from other studies that the earlier the diagnosis, the better the prognosis. So women, it looks as if women are at a disadvantage here by being diagnosed uh, later. So prognosis, in general, prognosis actually is better for women. Um, it's better, the uh, percentage of recovery in women is better, level of disability is lower in, in women, uh, community integration is better in women. So what would happen if, if women were diagnosed earlier? Would they be even better? Would prognosis be even better than it is now? So that's a good question. Maybe it wouldn't. Maybe it would be worse. I don't know. But the chances are that that prognosis would actually be even better for women. And what about sex, dif uh, sex difference in treatment with antipsychotics? We know that there's a number of psycho, uh, uh, pharmacokinetic and pharmacodynamic differences in how drugs are uh, metabolized in uh, women and, uh, and handled in, in, in women and in men. And so it affects both the effectiveness of the drug and the tolerability or side effects of the drug. A number of, of uh, liver enzymes, these three in particular, that metabolize most antipsychotic drugs are hormone sensitive. In other words, they, they, they react to, to um, hormones. The, the bottom line is that women actually need, in most cases, need lower doses than men do. For instance, if you look at olanzapine, which is a common antipsychotic drug, the effective dose for men, a daily dose for men, is 15.8 milligrams. The effective dose for women is 8.6 milligrams. So that's a big difference. Now, it, it depends, of course. There's a lot of variables here. Smoking is a, is a big one. More, more men smoke than, uh, than women do. Smoking is always a big one. Contraceptives, to a certain extent, is always a big one, too. However, the fact is that, that women, in general, need lower doses than men do, and that's particularly important in pregnancy. Pregnancy doses, because uh, hormone levels go up, they really need to be modulated in, in women, and it depends on the drug they're taking and the, and the particular um, metabolic enzyme that, through which it's uh, metabolized. So side effects in women um, are, there are more, much, many more side effects of antipsychotics in women. Women put on much more weight than men do, with uh, a whole lot of, uh, of course, sequelae in terms of diabetes and metabolic syndrome, also cardiovascular disease. The um, QT uh, interval on the, on the EKG is e anyway uh, longer in women and, and made more so by the addition of antipsychotic drugs. Sexual dysfunction is an interesting one because men, of course, complain more of it. And we usually think that men have more sexual dysfunction as a result of antipsychotic drugs. But actually, if you look at the, um, at the studies, it's actually women um, who have more sexual dysfunction uh, than, than men do. So I won't go through the, the other. But the fact is that women, and it's generally recognized that women do have more side effects from these drugs. However, Again, the, the methodology is not that great. I, I, I know this because I do, <laughs> I do these kind of studies. So sex stratification is not always done. The numbers of uh, women are low. And the searches that when you, you, know, when you try to do a synthesis of, 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 of all, because there's so much literature on this, you do a synthesis of all the studies that have been done, people can't duplicate your searches. Partly that's the fault, of, of course, of the researcher, but partly it's the fault of PubMed. I don't know if you've had this experience with PubMed, but you can put in the same search words into PubMed one day, and you get one list of, <laughs> of articles. You put in the same search the next day, you get a completely different result. It seems to depend on, on what kind of mood PubMed is in on, <laughs> on, that per on that particular day. But it's very, very difficult, anyway, to, to, uh, uh, to duplicate results. So the conclusions of all that is that um, uh, women, you should use low doses. You should avoid polypharmacy because, of course, drugs interact. Watch for interaction, especially with smoking, contraceptions, also with coffee. And in terms of research, 
you, we do need to improve our methodology in this, uh, in this field. Uh, so finally, do sex differences affect care needs for men and women with schizophrenia? And yes, they do. Uh, this is a Swedish study, but it's been replicated elsewhere as well. Women have more needs in physical health, uh, partly because of the side effects of drugs. They have more needs in safety. Women are the, um, uh, there's a lot of domestic violence in schizophrenia to, to women. There's a lot of just stray violence. Women with schizophrenia are often victims of, uh, of violence. And child care, of course. So th in these three areas, many more needs for women than, uh, than there are for men. And that's the, my conclusion that indeed sex and gender differences have important implications for diagnosis, prognosis, and treatment, and care needs. And studying these differences will ultimately help to resolve uh, the puzzle that is schizophrenia. Thank you. Bye.